Back in 1980, I was a mere lad with a bedroom to decorate. Now, of course, in those days, there was no changing rooms and no Mediterranean hues. All you could really do was slap a poster on the wall. And what's more, there were only two to choose from. The first one was this one of a lady playing tennis. <laughs> and the other one was this, the Lamborghini Countach. The early 80s were a troubled time. The miners' strike, John Lennon shot, and the Falklands War. But that was just the stuff on the news. The really important issue of the day was, which was cooler, the Ferrari Boxer or the Lamborghini Countach? <laughs> Lamborghini had succeeded in dividing the loyalties of pubescent British schoolboys. Fights were breaking out behind bike sheds. People were defacing one another's posters. That was the impact this thing had. Here's how they squared up. Ferrari had absolutely nothing to prove. It had a long history, the race breeding, the pedigree, and it was run by Enzo, a godfather figure with purple ink in his fountain pen. The Boxer had a flat 12 engine and styling by Pininfarina. It was a true thoroughbred. And now the Countach. Oh, by the way, I've never actually driven one of these before. I've been waiting 20 years to pop my Countach cherry. Where the Ferrari was an aristocrat, the Countach was an upstart. Lambo may have done the Mura, but they still weren't quite pucker. So to make up for that, it had to be flashy. Quite simply, it had to be the world's most outrageous supercar. And it was. This wasn't just a car, it was a pin-up. And you might like to know that Countach is a bit of Italian slang. It translates roughly as foie. This is Letchworth. It was the first garden city in the world and the site of the world's first roundabout a model of English middle-class suburbia. For a long time, it didn't even have a pub. The Countach fits in with all this, like a youth with a bad haircut and a can of spray paint. But even here, there was a time in the early 80s when every boy's bedroom would have had a piece of pornography on the wall. A Countach poster. In the Countach boxer battle, places like Letchworth were a landslide victory for the Lambo. It just looked so much cooler. Oh, sure, more and more cosmetic bits were added during its 18-year life. But so what? This was the 80s. We thought Kevin Keegan's perm was cool. I was always in the Countach camp, and I can tell you off the top of my head that this one's an LP400S. It does 180 miles per hour and 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds. It also has some of the fattest rear tyres ever fitted to a production car at 345 millimetres. Listen to that. I absolutely knew it would sound like that just by looking at the pictures. So, it looks fantastic, and it sounds fantastic, and that's what matters when you're 15 and dreaming. But I'm not 15 anymore, and after an hour at the wheel in 2003, my dream car turns out to be a bit of a nightmare. It never occurred to me, for example, that I'd need a hammer to change gear. Or that depressing the clutch would be a lot easier if I got a friend to help me. It's absolutely baking hot in here. Look, I've got the window fully open. And there's also a really alarming smell of petrol. And here's another thing. We're here driving through leafy Hertfordshire, and I'm told it's very pretty. And it looks very pretty through the windscreen, but can't be quite so sure out of the side. And there is a rear view mirror up there, and there is, in fact, a rear window, but it's very small. 
It's sort of like watching your television through your letterbox. God in heaven, this is hard work. I'm going to stop for a cup of tea. Right, let's have a quick recap on the dream car. The seat is crippling. The controls are murderous. I'm too hot. I'm deaf. I've been poisoned. I can't see. And I can't park. This is what going to hell in a handcart probably feels like. And it looks so good on the poster. In fact, I wish it had stayed there. I'm absolutely gutted. But you know what, it's not the car's fault, it's mine. I've broken a golden rule. You never, ever meet your childhood heroes. Roger Moore, Lamborghini Countach, Brian Kant. Stick with the memories. They're just better. So you're a shattered man. That's my youth gone. And I've got oh. even worse news for you. Oh, no. Do not tell me that that's a lady boy. Her no, name I... is Stephen. <laughs> Actually, it's even worse than that, because until now, I've had a Nobel Peace Prize for parallel parking, mm -hmm. and obviously I made a complete hash of it in that. But we have put a camera where the mirror is, and I just want you to be sure that you understand, see, just how difficult that was. Steve, or whatever her name is, could actually be sunbathing naked on here, and, you know, I wouldn't have seen that either. You wouldn't have a clue. Well, the thing is, James, I can park a Countach. Can you? And I've got a couple of cones here, and I'm going to prove it. We're going to put one there, OK? And I'm going to put the other one over here. And I will be able to get that car into this space, no problem at all. Right. You don't think so? <laughs> you don't think so? I, this could be a bit of a laugh. So. Uh. Right. I'm in. And you can see the problem. You certainly can't see out of the back. But the extraordinary thing about a Countach is that... Oh, that's a good sound. You can actually drive it while not being in it. And we're off. How about that? This was a technique developed at the Lamborghini factory which I've modified slightly for use here. I'm not wearing sunglasses. That's the difference. <laughs> I am in! <laughs> and that is how you park a contest.